what's going on everyone thanks for joining in today we have a uh, a special visitor shadrach kipchu here fresh off of his win at the usa 15k championships um over in jacksonville florida shadrach this is um your fourth time doing this race uh is it fourth yeah, yeah it wait wait yeah it's fourth. it is it was fourth. the first one you probably don't want people to know about I cried, man. I cried out of the race. <laughs> ask, ask my, uh, ask, 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 ask. I cried on it. So. Oh no, it's all right. So well, that's good though. I can show people that you can have a, a very bad year and then years down the road, you can, uh, maybe you can win it like yourself, but up to through the progression. So you were second last year or no, you didn't race last year. I didn't race last year. Yeah. So you were second two years prior to that. Um, yeah. One, two, both of your teammates, Leonard Greer, and then again to the other, uh, Stanley Cabernet. Um, leading into this race, did you feel anything different than you did in the previous years? <laughs> to be honest, I, I didn't want to go to the race because Kid River Run is really challenging and it's pretty tough for us. And then to have Corey and Stanley in the race, you know, those guys are crazy road racers. Stanley is like amazing. And of course, you know, Corey. Like they are really tough, and I was disappointed two years ago and three years ago when they both beat me, and I was like, I don't want to go back again there. But Stanley convinced me to go. Really? Like, yeah, he did. He did. Well, he now, why me. is that? Now, why would a teammate convince an, a teammate who is just as good, if not better, on any given day, um, to take away so much money? And I mean, it's Stanley. You know, he's a pretty good friend of mine, and we all trained together and he told me, let's go to this race, you are fit and stuff. I convinced him 2016 to come to the race when he beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I remember we, 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 we trained in Kenya together and a few days before the race, I said, Stanley, I contact race organizer, you should come to this race. And he came there and beat me. And then, ironically, this year he convinced me. I didn't want to do it. I, my next race was worse when I told you. And Stanley told me, let's, let's go and have fun together. You know, we're not going to push and stuff. And yeah, and then I agreed and talked to coach. And yeah. Wow. So, so leading into the race, um, the gun goes off. Was there any specific plan to work with each other? Because um, there was also two other guys that were helping push the pace. Yeah. Now, what, how typically do you guys go about racing each other? Is it like free-for-all or do you work as a team and then you decide in the last mile we're going to do it or is it just like it just go with the flow so considering that the main important race is world cross you know and we didn't mind much about that we just went there and ran together not push the best compared and like what we did in 10 my life we went like from one to five and 5k new york we went straight from the gun but this one we ran conservatively because we have an important, a really, really important race coming up. Yes. For world cross country. And we're going to touch I up. took with the guys and told the guys, guys, let's use as, let's not use a lot of energy in this race. Let's just chill and rest the last one mile. It, it comes to that. And okay. that's exactly what we did, you know. The, um, you run up the hill? Yeah, yeah, after up the hill, you know. Corey and Stanley, like I told you, Corey and Stanley, I respect those guys. Yeah, they, you don't want to count them out in a race. You know, they are really like when I was going there, I didn't even know I'm going to win, but I was like, I'm going to try because they both, you know, you have to share this stuff. They put me with me and, you know, I have, it's, maybe it's my time to win it. And yeah, I'm glad <laughs> I did. And, yeah, they are really good competitors. I love them. You know, they make me anxious before the race. And yeah, they are the one to keep me working. So, so you ran. And now it's a little downhill for those who may be watching and haven't seen the race, but the Gate River Run is in Jacksonville, Florida. It's the USA 15K Championships. It's 9.3 miles. Uh, the last mile is historically known to be downhill. Um, yeah. Either way, you ran an unprecedented three minutes, 59 seconds um, closing mile. It's hard to comprehend, but... Yeah. Coming down to the last 400, was there any point in time throughout the race where you knew you had it secured? 
or is it like not until you cross the line? Because you look like you had a pretty, like it was yours, a, a, about 200 meters out. I didn't know until 50 meters to go. You know, going, going down the hill, if you saw the photos, going down the hill, yeah. those guys didn't want to quit. They yeah. were going hard. You know, they are really good. <laughs> they, they can race really good in downhill, Stanley and, and Korea. And yeah. they were going for it at some point, like, like 1,200 meters to go, they almost left me and I tried to be patient a little bit. And then um, we almost went wrong way and I showed them, like they almost went, they almost turned around. I was like, hey, this is the way. And I tried to push them to the left because that was the right way because I knew exactly where the course is. I mean, I thought they, I think they confused themselves and they wanted to make the right hand. That's where I made the move. And then I left, I left them like two, like almost a meter, but Korean came closing, like 100 meters to go. That guy is crazy. Yeah, same to Stanley. They were breathing on my neck. They didn't want to leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want to lose this year. And it was exciting. And then 50 meters to go, I, I had an extra gear and I took it home. So, Okay, I'm glad you, you touched up on that. Let's talk about this extra gear. And I'm about to mention some stuff, and then we'll transition into World Cross Country. Uh, mm -hmm. And you probably don't want to hear about all these results I'm about to put into your face. Uh, mm -hmm. But as of lately, you've seen a lot of success winning. But prior to September, or I mean, you've, you've won races, obviously, throughout your career. But notably, um, and even Let's Run mentioned it shortly after your USA cross-country victory, quote-unquote, Shadrach Kipchichir, most known for getting second. So... Um, we're going to date back to 2011. That was actually uh, the Florida Relays. It was the one race that we actually ran against each other, um, raced against each other. You actually lapped me. Um, you and Paul lapped me in that race. Uh, but you were second to Paul. You went 14.04. He went 14.03. So you were second to Paul. People probably don't know y'all's relationship date back so far. Yeah. But so you were second there. You were second to Chez in the 2014 NCAA's 10K, second to Galen in the 2016 trials, second to Hassan in 2017 U.S. champs, second to Ryan Hill in USA 5K outdoors, second to Paul in indoor 3K 2018, second to Lopez in the 10K at the USA champs, and second to Paul uh, recently at the USA 5K outdoors. Doesn't mean you haven't won USA outdoors 5K yourself, but Let's put all those second places aside because we all know as a competitor like yourself or anyone, nobody likes to be, at least at your level, the first loser. Um, it, it stings. So what have you done? Because in the last six months, there's been a transition to where you're like a favorite. You were the U.S. 10-mile champion in September of last year. Coming into this year, uh, I'm pretty sure I think you're undefeated. You were the USA cross country champion uh, in, in convincing form. You looked really, really good closing. Uh, and then just last month, or yeah, last month, you were the, uh, sorry, two weeks ago. Um, yeah, you won the USA 15K championships. We were just talking about a Gate River run, and you looked really strong there. Is there anything that you have done in your training or in your nutrition or in, in anything to make a, a switch to going from now from second to a lot of first place i mean to be honest i didn't i've not done anything different it's just like the mental you know the way i think now in racing wise i, I think i've grown up as an athlete you know racing with these all these great guys you know it takes time some people takes like really short time for them to learn but for me it took like time it took time for me to learn on how to win and you know like when like how you said it stinks to be second you know there's some times on those rails that i had sleepless nights like what happened i thought i had it and then my friend calls me like second again i was like yeah but, you know <laughs> like it stinks like i was really fr i've been frustrated a lot like getting second at all the time and with that close like microseconds and stuff like it's, it's really it, it's things so much and i think you know 
recently I have mastered how to win now. Like I've yeah. I've learned, you know, racing with these guys and I've learned how to win, like, you know, how to be patient and how to make the move when it matters. And okay. That's how I've been, you know, that's how I've been progressing. Yeah, no, that helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, so what about your teammate who made a, uh, a pretty big announcement a couple weeks ago, or sorry, this past weekend, Mr. Uh, Mr. Paul Chalimo mentioning now that he's going to be doing the double in both uh, worlds this year and I would imagine in 2020 for the Olympic trials. I would say right now that you're the favorite depending who you speak to, they may have their different opinion. Um, having spoke to Paul yesterday, I do know that he, uh, I think, foresees yourself also as the uh, favorite. But in a tactical race, you never know if it comes down to a kick, maybe it leads to whoever. You've obviously outkicked Paul in other races, but do you see yourself as the favorite or how does the whole dynamic change now with – Paul in uh in the race in the 10k I mean if it comes to tactical race it's different you know but if we make it an honest 10k that's a different thing yep. but again Paul you know Paul you know Paul is like a good athlete you know he has won medals and two medals and you know he has won diamond legs I have not so he has a lot of experience on that mm -hmm. but you know I don't want to dwell on that too much but you run 27 miles yeah. yeah, I've ran 27 hours, and but he hasn't ran a 10k before, so we don't know. But if it comes to a tactical race, that's a different thing. He has a kick, he has a kick, and you know it's gonna be a different story. But yeah, well, he's got to run yeah. 27:40 first. Yeah, that's another thing again. Yeah, that's another. I'm sure. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. You know, he's he's yeah. pretty, he's pretty competitive and tough athlete, and you know, once he said his mind, he's gonna go for it. But I am a, to be honest, I'm excited to have him in a 10 game to yeah, make the race honest. I don't want I don't want this sit and kick race. I mean I can kick too. I'm not I'm not gonna count myself oh, out. Oh no, no, we've yeah. absolutely we've seen but that. I wanted to be honest and you know if Paul wins, that's fine. If I win it's fine. If somebody else wins, you know, whoever works hard and whoever has a good day on that day, you know, deserves to win. Everybody deserves to win. That's why we all talk the line and start the race. True. True. So let's uh, enough about Paul. Uh, World Cross Country is in two weeks, less than two weeks. You and a whole bunch of teammates are off to uh, Denmark. Same. It's a, a very similar team to that represented the U.S. in 2017 in Uganda, where you guys finished fifth. Um, obviously, I'm sure you guys want a better showing. Is there any personal goals um, go, leading into Denmark? Obviously, I would imagine the Eastern, Eastern Africa is, are the favorites between Kenya and Ethiopia. Um, but where do you guys see yourself leading into this race? You know, I'm glad all of our guys, all of my guys now are fit. They are really fit. And, you know, we, we are in close range together. Like, we don't have, like, a, a, you know, a crazy margin within each other. We yeah. close, like, our times, our fitness, our level of fitness now is the same. And that's really important in team, in cross country team, like yeah, about in, in scoring, in a matter of scoring, you know, that will help a lot in scoring no, as well. Sure. So that's the more important thing, you know, these guys are fit and they are healthy. And mm -hmm. I've been talking with these guys a lot and we're going to go for it. We're going to keep all out we have and hopefully wow. we win or get the podium, so that would be our main goal there. But we're going to go run for our dear life down there in Arroz. We're sending an amazing team. I know you were 21st yeah. um, 20, uh, two years ago. Ah, right, right, yeah. behind, right behind Lenny. Yeah, um, that was tough, yeah. Do you have any personal goals? Do you want it yourself, or do you just... How, no, how you for me, I don't have any. For this team-wise, I don't have any personal goals. So long as we cross the line and seeing the scoring board like we place really higher as a team yep. that would be really exciting for me you know, that, that i'll be really, really happy if we all run good and get the podium or something like that so you always have nice things to say about the team one day i want to hear you talk smack um no I... <laughs> cool that, they, they keep me going they help me a lot in training and you know i i run good for so my teammates they help me a lot and, 
I will not imagine tra- running good without them. Well, let's. Um, I actually have a little surprise for you. Um, I know you said you hadn't seen the course yet. Um, can you see the screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I know we were just briefly touching up on this. This is the course for the World Cross Country Championships here in two weeks. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, hats off to Denmark for making it such an iconic race. Um, but a part of this course that I think is five 2K loops, um, you, you guys are running up this, this little thing called what they're calling the roof. And it has a 10% grade. It looks like it's going for about, uh, I want to say, uh, don't quote me on this. It looks like 100 meters, the length of a football field. Are you guys, are you ready for this? Um, that's a small hill compared to what you train here in Colorado Springs, you know. We always train in a 2K low, and there's this massive hill we train. And, you know, it will be like similar to this, but this is pretty tiny. And I'm sure my guys will not be afraid of that tiny. So. Okay. Yeah. So you are, uh, you are putting in the, the required hill work. Yeah, we do that. That's, we got prepared on that. We've been training for that. And my, our coach, my coach does a really good job on picking at specific training places that, you know, that simulates what you're going to see in a row. So I think, I'm not thinking, but I'm pretty sure my guys are ready for this. Yeah, there's a lot of downhill too. If you look here in the bottom left, you'll see around yeah. uh, mile two, or I think that's what that is. Um, yeah, for sure. Of course, when there's a hill, there's always a downhill, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and obviously with the 359 last mile and the 15K last week, I don't think that's an issue for you guys. So either way, we're excited. Um, I'm going to exit out of here real quick um, and bring it back to this. Uh, boom. Cool. Uh, other than that, so – We'll finish up here. After World Cross Country, what do you have else planned for the season leading up to U.S. Um, I have Shanghai 5K. Shanghai 5K? Yeah, I want to bring my 5K time to a decent time. So 13.18 is not yeah. what I'm pleased of. So. That's not an accurate representation of, yeah. your, uh, of you. When you went 27.0, do you remember your splits? Uh, no idea. No. Yeah, 13.30 almost back to back. Well, cool. So yeah. Shanghai, is there anything between Shanghai and USA outdoors? Um, Shanghai, if I run good in Shanghai, it will open me. You know, I don't have any good time in Diamond League, so it will open me to get opportunities to run some Diamond League. So for now, for now, I don't know anything okay. beyond Shanghai. So Okay. Well, cool. Shad, thank you so much for the, uh, for the interview. I think it was a wonderful week. When do you guys take off to uh, Denmark? Uh, we take off in What's today, Thursday, March first. Sometimes next week, I think on Monday or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I hope you have a great time. Uh, we'll definitely be watching you over here. And again, thank you so much for your time. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, man. All right. All right. Bye. Yeah.